One thing to sing it. Thank you, Lord. It's one thing to say it, but do you believe it? Let's just let's just see if you do for a minute. You can be seated for just a second. Let's go to work for just a minute. We're going to bring our students in at the close of this message and pray over them. All the students and faculty, staff, anybody working with children, anybody who got kids not even here, you can be a part of that. Let's just talk for a few minutes about all the things. See if we can cover it in just a few minutes. All, look at somebody say, all the things. Psalm 8, verse 4. What is man that you are mindful of him? Wow. And the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory. You've been looking for the glory of the Lord. Did you look in your mirror? You have crowned him with glory and honor. Well, I don't feel respected. Did you look in your mirror? I don't know whose respect you're looking for. You have made him, talking about me and you, to have dominion over everything he has created. See those assignments in people that you are dealing with? Those are created people. Those irritations. You have put all the things under his feet. Sometimes we just need to read the Bible. Have you ever heard the question, what's wrong? And sometimes we'll say, everything well, what's really wrong? No, everything is wrong. Everything. Or you may go to a beautiful wedding and you'll hear the terms, um, oh, everything was perfect. Let me tell you, baby, everything is not wrong and everything is not perfect. Ever. You may hear the phrase, everything was a disaster. No, not everything was a disaster. So we use... This little, little word, you know, thing, things can cause us frustration. So this is pretty much how we are right now. Just what's wrong? All the things. Not just one thing, it's just all the things. So I, I, I want to just focus for a moment on, on things that can frustrate us lead to depression, cause anxiety, anger. You know, so I've got all these. I really want to know the team that works the closest with me. I want you to know I saved your very soul today because in preparation for this message, I really, 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 really wanted to disrupt this entire sanctuary. I wanted to turn chairs upside down, face them backwards, and make you guys come in church today and just be all issue-fied. And you have to find your place, get a little fussy with, with why, why is this building not in order? Everything is upside down. I really wanted to turn everything upside down. But the thought hit my tired brain. After you do that and after you preach that message, then after all them issue five people go home, some of us other issue five people are going to have to come here and put this place back in order. And that caused me a lot of stress. So... I have just improvised um, to make this work. So there's just a few things I want to talk. I just want to bring to our attention that is anybody frustrated? Have you been frustrated this week? The rest of y'all, I'm giving an altar call at the end of this message for all liars that will have their part in the lake of fire. Do you feel like this season is a little more frustrating than others have been? Do you find that people are more easily ticked off than they? Like, you better not be texting and driving because you will face an idiot. And, and, and they're just trying our pure salvation on I-75 North and South. Now, all y'all who travel 24, I've, I've, I've prayed for you. Not really, I haven't. That's just been y'all's problem. 
but my trek home is 75 north and 75 south. And it's like, Jesus. I got in my car to come this way one day this week. It might have been Thursday. I don't remember. Friday, maybe. Doesn't really matter. But all the compliant people get over to the left two lanes immediately. Miles ahead of the required compliance. Now, I am one that fusses at my husband sometimes because I sometimes hate those drivers on the moment that I try to comply. And there goes smarty butt, you know, up the right-hand side. Well, the other day, I decided to be a smarty butt. So I got in. The, the two right lanes were still open. So everybody was in the two left lanes, like for a long way. And usually it bogs down around Bonnie Oaks. And then it will, it will, right before then, it opens back up at Bonnie Oaks. If you can just breathe through a few moments, you'll be out of it. But this day, they were backed up almost to the Udwa exit in the two left lanes. So I merged, and I went on up the hill. And there, several others got out of line and started following me. I'm thinking, well, if I get in trouble, we all can get in trouble together. But it was not even the road construction. Nope. It was a truck that had stalled in the middle of the street. Way before the two lanes were required. So we just scooted right on past them and got right in front of that truck and went on. And I thought, that's how life is. Sometimes there's a stall in front of us. We don't know it. We don't check out what slowed us down. And when you do, there's zero reason for you to have slowed down. Sometimes we just get in the wrong lane. Now, those who get on the, you know, the, the no lanes on the right-hand side, you know, I've done that a couple times too. Just don't tell my husband. I do it when he's not in the car with me because it nullifies my preaching when I'm in the car with him. But there are things that frustrate us and that lead to greater frustrations Sometimes we have health issues or someone we love has health issues and that causes us a higher level of frustration and, and concern. And some concerns can lead to pure anxiety. Here's a good one. and I, These are in random order. I don't even know what they are. Information overload. You need to put your cell phone down. You need to get off Twitter, TikTok, talk tick. Not so Instagram. Turn your news off. All of them. All of them. Because ain't none of them got nothing positive to say. Now, if the world goes communist, some of y'all send me a text, okay? Because I, I don't watch the news. It's not on in my house. You say, well, you're going to live with your head in the sand. No, I'm living my head in the Bible. I don't need to listen to their riffraff in my head and get my spirit all torn up. I got too much on my life plate to do to listen. And you need to have the power of scroll. Stop commenting. Stop commenting. Get off social media. If I don't comment on your, if I don't like your stuff, it's because I get on about midnight, check about two things, and I'm out. Bye. Tapping out. It's just not worth. Information overload. You know too much. Everybody is an expert at nothing. Everybody has an opinion, and I don't need your opinion. Don't ever accept opinions or criticism from somebody that you would not go to for advice. Ooh, this will cause you stress. I don't know if all y'all can see it. It's just, we'll just put this one out front and center right there. Relationships will cause you problems. You better choose. You better stay single until God brings that person to you. And if they married to somebody else, he ain't brought them, baby. You can say, but God, all you want to. You'll find yourself in a but God situation. Oh, here's one. Prescription meds. You understand they're practicing medicine on you. 
Have you ever gone to the doctor, they give you one prescription and it causes your system to go haywire. They'll say, well, take this, it'll suppress the haywire in that one. And you'll find yourself with 16, 17, 18 prescriptions. I guarantee you if you're a woman and you go to your doctor and you say, I'm having a difficulty, it will be anxiety meds coming your way. That will alter your very living. Sometimes we just need to go back to, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I read that somewhere. Ooh, that's one. For all of us control freaks, feeling out of control. Here's one you may not like. This leads to, this leads to higher anxiety. You drink enough of it, your system will lose its mind. You'll be more tense. We're just going to keep on rocking. Oh, negative thinking. This will ruin your life. This will shorten your life. This will run people away from you. This will nullify the word of God in your life. Because when you're negative thinking, you're negative speaking. I don't know what's back here. Let's go see. Lack of sleep, dear God. Jesus. Anybody got lack of sleep? If you don't get some sleep, you're going to be ill as a hornet. Oh, here's one. You get you a drink to calm down. All you're doing is assigning your life into bondage. I submit to you, you don't need a drink to calm you down. You need a good dose of the Holy Ghost. Because whatever you're going through, liquor will not solve it. Unless you take the liquor bottle and hit them over the top of the head and you gunk them out. I'm just saying. Conflict will wear you out. Your home should not be a battleground. Let's see what's back here. Oh, drugs. Drugs. Say, well, I need some drugs. No, you probably need to change the drugs you own. Just say it. It's addictions. It's bondage. Skipping meals. That'll make you hangry. Hangry. Say, what's wrong with you? I'm hangry. Arguments. Some of y'all having the same arguments with the same people you've been having for years. Just continue on in your madness, I guess. These are things that frustrate us. Perfectionist. It's got to be done this way. There's no other way. Yes, there is. Just ask a non-perfectionist. If it don't get done, they don't care. All you non-perfectionists are the reason that us perfectionists need drugs. <laughs> All you unorganized people give us organized people migraines. I know Jesus loves you, but whoo, some days I don't. I'm just sorry. Concern over disasters. My papa used to come downstairs and tell my mom it's going to snow today. He wouldn't tell her it was in Chicago. <laughs> Are there disasters happening? Yes. Should we be concerned? Yes. But if you fill your heart and mind and life 24-7 with what's wrong, you will never see what's right. So these are just a few issues that frustrate us and cause us to be off kilter. Anxiety is the order of the day. You will read the stats. There are more suicides, more anxiety meds being 
diagnosed and, and written prescriptions written than ever before in our history. Anxiety is feeling tense and nervous and unable to relax. Having a sense of dread. So how do we break the cycle? Take a reality check. Go back to Philippians 4.13. You can quote it. If I said Philippians 4.13 and didn't even put it on the screens, you would know what it said. What does it say? I can do what? I can do what? Oh, I can't do that. It's too hard. But I, I don't think I could do that. Through Christ, who strengthens me. So how do we find some quiet in the chaos? I say it all the time. If you do a search on the Internet, the first thing they'll tell you is breathe. All the Christians and non-Christians would tell you the same thing, breathe. There's a lot of things in your life that's overrated. You know, cutting your grass is a little overrated on a hot day. This might be a necessary, necessary thing. I think sharing is overrated. You know, we try to teach kids that another child comes in and wants what they have in their hand. Why? Get them something else to play with. If you don't, you're going to have a war on your hands. Choose your battles. If you want quiet in the chaos, breathe. Listen to worship music. Take a walk. Here's one. Help Somebody else. Get your focus off of you. I found this nugget in Scripture. Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword yet in all what? All of these things. We are what? We are cast down, burdened, depressed, on medication. I need a drink. I can't do this. Not just conquerors, he says we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, <laughs> nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come, nothing high, nothing low, or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you're in the middle of all of this stuff called life, I think we need to remember our spiritual legacy. Go all the way back to Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. The Bible says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. He's talking to Abraham. All the families, are you a family? Are you a part of a family? Were you born into a family? Raise your hand. If you are born, raise your hand. If you were born to a woman, raise your hand. I mean, you got to love her, like her, whatever. But you're part of a family. All the families on earth, and if I were right now to put, who recognize my blessing will be blessed through you. Then you go to Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. Now, Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things that's our legacy he is our spiritual father that's where it starts for us did you know that so go back are you living your legacy we also have a spiritual responsibility Colossians 3 verse 2 set your minds and keep them set. So I he didn't say, I'm going to set your mind for you, and I'm going to keep your mind for you. Sorry. 
He doesn't. He says, no, baby, you set your mind and you keep your mind set on what is above the higher. Read the screens. It's a cheat sheet. Higher things. I know y'all are reading on to the next scripture. I know. Not on the things that are on the earth. So you set your mind. What does that mean when I say, you, or the scripture says to set your mind? It means you're going to have to put some curbs in your life. You know, when your car hits a curb, it kind of jolts you a minute. Like, oh, shoot. I just scraped my tire or my tire just blew out. You're going to have to stop some text convos. You're going to need to kick some stuff out your head. I don't think I turned this one over, did I? Oh, Lord, look what I missed. That's bothering y'all perfectionists, weren't it? Yeah, oh, it's killing y'all. I didn't plan that, but that worked out real good. So, with all of this stuff, we need to learn to give some things to God. Just give it to him. So we come to church, we worship. There's a new name written down in glory. I'm going to trust you, Jesus. I'm tired of my issues. I'm going to praise. I'm going to dance. I'm going to love him like I've never loved him before. Oh, pastor, preach the word today. Woo! Preach the word. We had church today. Man, I felt God up in the house today. Woo! I'm done. I'm going to put some curbs in my life. I'm going to put some curbs. I'm tired of all this stuff. I'm going to start applying the word of God to my life. Going to a higher level. I'm going to kick that devil. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm definitely done skipping meals. I'm done. That's church. That's what we do. We say, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And in an environment like this, we do. Then you go to Philippians 4 and he says, believers, if you're a believer, raise your hand. Believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, there's your standard. Whatever is pure, see that the list gets a little tougher. Whatever is wholesome, whatever is lovely, whatever brings peace, whatever is admirable and of a good reputation, if there is anything, any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them. Get out your yoga class. Get in your Bible. Stop reading your horoscopes and get in the Bible. You don't need that junk. This is what you need. Oh, this is, I'm going to preach on this. Center your mind on them and implant them. I'm going to just let that rest right there. Because there's lots of implants going on. I just lobbed that one right out there. And there's nothing wrong with them. If you want to implant whatever, just go on ahead with your bad self. But make sure you implant the Word of God in your heart. Make sure you know how to center your mind. See, because here's what's happened. What happens to us, we, we come to church and, and we make a new commitment to God and 
But then the week starts happening and the bills start coming and the frustrations and the, and the concerns start happening and, and we just need to have a little extra. I just, I just need to, I just need to sit down and think about some of these things because it's, it's just a lot. Um, I know I gave you all this stuff, God, but it, it's a lot. I, I, we just need to talk about it again. It's a good thing I'm not God. I'd say the, the line is closed. We've already discussed this. I got it. I got it. Don't come back. Don't come back to me with that junk. You gave it to me, so you want to take it back? Okay, you can take it back. You tried tithing for one week, but you don't want to tithe anymore? Okay, take your, take your tithe back. It's okay. Just take it. Take it back. Just take it back. And sometimes we do it sincerely, out of sincere emotions. Because sometimes the conflicts and the arguments... And the relationships are difficult to resolve. But if you, we don't put some curbs in our lives, see, most of the stuff we're facing, if we could have already changed it, it would have already changed. If we could have already changed that person, we'd have already changed that person. If we could have already healed that situation, it would already be healed. But we come to church and we... We worship, and then we get concerned again, and we start just pulling stuff back out to deal with. And we take it back again. And we try to be the Holy Ghost, and we try to be the Savior. And in so doing, we're losing ourselves. We're diminishing our anointing. Because God says, I have a work for you. And he wants to get past all of your excuses. But we just, we just pull up a chair of concern and we sit down. You know, the enemy's plan is when you sit down, you know, with your word, all the concerns start coming back. You can go into your prayer closet and pray yourself into depression every day. So how's that possible? Because you go in and you start regurgitating everything that's wrong. Everything, every prayer he hasn't answered yet, every person who's done you wrong, whatever's not fixed, whatever, what money you don't have, you start rehearsing it and you come out more depressed than when you went in. Don't waste your time in his presence. You serve God Jehovah. Who was and is and is to come. And if we can get a glimpse of really who he is, then everything about us changes. So we have a spiritual legacy, we have a spiritual responsibility, and we have a reason to worship. Psalm 18, verse 39. You have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued my enemies under my feet. That's the reason we say to you, you need to get your dance back. You need to know what your spiritual authority looks like. The Bible says the enemy is under your feet. Under your feet. So when he's looking you in the face, tell him, get back to your place. Get back where you belong. Psalm 103 says, let all that I am praise the Lord. Another translation says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. This one says, let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. May I never forget what? The good things. Say, but I'm going through a thing, but I don't need to forget the good things he does for me. But I'm in the middle of something, but I don't need to forget the good things. But there, I've got a Judas I'm dealing with, but I don't need to forget the good things. But I've got a doctor's report. Don't forget the good things. You tell that assignment that's in your face, go back to hell where you came from. 
My God gives me good things. He doesn't give me health issues. He doesn't bring a Judas into my life. Go back to hell where you came from. I've given you my last minute. I put a curb in my life, and when your vehicle jumps that curb, you have come in the wrong place. Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all of my crazy sins. Wow. He heals all of my diseases. Every last one of them. He didn't say, but I can't handle the big ones. All of my diseases. He redeems me from death. Death thoughts, death living, and when I die, I will wake up in his presence. He crowns me with love and thank God for his tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. This is my favorite. In my youth, <laughs> can't nobody guess your age when you are living in him, baby. I don't care if you're white and you crack or you're black and you don't crack. If you're his person, they'll say, I don't know who you serve. I don't know what you're taking, what vitamins you're taking, but I want some of your stuff because your youth has been renewed like the eagles. So you have reasons to lift your hands and worship. Father, we do that right now in this room. We take a moment just to thank you for the good things that you have done. The good things that you are doing and the good things that you already have planned for us. You fill our lives with good things. Good things. Good things. Good things. Good things. Somebody needs to open your mouth and bless him right now. If he's done anything for you at all, get on your feet and bless him right now. If he's done one thing for you, get on your feet and bless him. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and bless him. Oh, we love you, Lord. Stop. No props. Open your mouth and bless him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Get your mouths in your microphones and bless him. No props. No props. Just bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. Hey. I bless you, Father. I bless you. I magnify you. You have broken through the assignment. You have delivered me. In Jesus, bless him. Bless him for your peace. Bless him for your anointing. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. All that is within me. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Open your, open your mouth and lift your hands like lightning rods. Hallelujah. Bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Let all that I am Hallelujah. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. You and all that is within Hallelujah. me. Bless Hallelujah. your holy name. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Because you fill my Hallelujah. life with good Hallelujah. things. Bless Jesus. the Lord, oh yes. my soul. And all bless. that is within me. We bless your name. You alone are God. We bless your you name. Bless you are the Lord. Lord. Bless the Lord. You are able. We bless you, Lord. You are trustworthy. Holy is your name. Just give a wave offering right now. Just a wave offering. Just Holy bless him. is his name. Holy Just bless him. Bless him. Name. Bless him. Holy bless him. Holy is your name. Creator is your name. Honor and power belong to you. We give you praise and we give you glory. Nobody like you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. We bless your name. Holy, holy, holy. Some of y'all say, well, why do we need to wave? Because when you wave, it's a twofold message. You're speaking to every assignment that has come against you. Your time is up. 
I am taking territory. And when you wave, you yeah. are releasing the glory yes. of God over your life. Yes. You're releasing his anointing over your life. Yes. Why don't you lift both hands and wave yes. like you hadn't waved in a long time? Yes, yes, yes. Just wave in his glory. Hallelujah. Wave out the assignments. Hallelujah. Wave in his blessing. Yes. Wave in his breath. In Jesus' name. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Jesus, Jesus. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh, holy, 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 holy. You need to bless him because he has armed you with strength for the battle. And he has put the enemy under your feet. Just move your feet. If you don't feel like dancing, it's okay. Just pick up a foot and move it down. Just recognize yourself that the assignment is under your feet. The assignment, what's trying to kill you is under your feet. Under my feet. Under my feet. Under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We recognize there are issues that are bombarding our world, our schools, our churches. We recognize that you're looking for a voice. This house is one of those voices. This people group is one of those voices. So Father, we have once again folded up some issues. We're going to lay it at your feet one more time. Yes, 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 yes. But today is different. I'm not picking these things up again. I'm not picking it up again. I'm not going to sit in that chair again. It's yours, and you can deal with all of this. You said, bring it to you. You said your burden is light and your, your yoke is light and your burden is easy. You said, bring it to you and lay it down at your feet. So we're laying it down. And today we walk out of here without this. Today for the next seven days we're going to set our minds. We're going to keep them set on you. Because we can't handle all of this. We can't do, we can't do what you've called us to do. When things are living in our heads that are causing us to lose sleep. We bless you, Father. We thank you that you love us. And truthfully, you're orchestrating all of this. If we'll just let you be you. We trust your timing. We trust your word. We trust your word. We trust your word. So today... We just take your word and we put it over on all of this. So all of these issues, you're going to have to deal with the word. In Jesus' name.